Thank you so much, Sarah. We're just taking a few minutes to give people time to sign up. So as you join us, if you'll say hello and where you're from, you can type your name in the chat and which uh, ABE site you're with. Um, if you're with an ABE site, we sometimes have people join us who are not at an ABE site, but they're just interested in the topic. So please um, say hello and introduce yourself in our chat, which you should find at the bottom of the screen. We'll start in about two minutes. You do have the ability to see a transcript and captions at the bottom of your screen. So um, I know we have people who speak a number of different languages at this roundtable today. So please feel free to use those tools, use the captions. Um, and as always, when you register for a roundtable, we'll send out the recording and we'll send out all the materials that are going to be shared today so that you have those for your own records and you can um, read and review them on your own. Um, so we're really excited to have everyone here today. Please introduce yourself. Thanks, I see we have Courtney from the program office from Arizona. We've got Aishugul from uh, Turkey who's gonna be presenting today. So please say hello, introduce yourself. We have many of our Italian team who have been just incredible contributors to the program office and have joined our, our pilot efforts and our professional development online when we were first learning how to do that during the pandemic. Um, we have just such fantastic sites who really helped keep this program running during that time. Um, so welcome to everybody. I think we're about almost at time. So I think we'll go ahead and get started. And as people join, that's okay. We can let them in um, if, if we've already started. Um, I think we have a lot to talk about today. So we're gonna use every bit of this hour. Um, so I'd like to begin by just saying hello to everyone. And thank you all for coming to our third installment of 2023 of the Amgen Biotech Experience Teacher Roundtable Series. I'm Jessica Juliuson, and I'm the Director of Community and Strategy for the ABE Program Office. And it's always such a pleasure for me to host these roundtables because I always learn something. Um, for those of you who are new to this series, these roundtables are designed for our ABE teacher community from around the world. It's a chance for our teachers to really hear and learn from each other and from you about topics that are of interest to science and particularly biotechnology teachers. Um, if we hope you find this series valuable and pre please feel free to tag us in social media if you use that and you want to share your thoughts. Um, please tag at ABE Prog Office, and I'll ask Sarah to go ahead and paste that in the chat as well. Um, this roundtable is going to be recorded and posted on our website, so you can always access it after today. Um, and if you're registered, you'll receive all the materials and a transcript of the discussion. We do hope to have some time at the end for questions. So if you have questions at any point during this roundtable, please put them in the chat. We'll be watching and we'll be pulling out those questions along the way. So please, at any point, you won't be interrupting. Just pop your question in there and we'll keep our eyes on that and ask at the end. Um, so I'm going to start by introducing our panelists, and we have a really big group of panelists today, um, which is a wonderful thing to have. Um, so many experts that we have with us. Um, so I'll begin by introducing our team from ABE Turkey. Dr. Elif Adbeli Shaheen is the site director for ABE Turkey and currently works as an education expert in the development workshop. And her fields of interest include science education, the nature of science, environmental education, teacher professional development, inquiry-based science education, teacher beliefs, and critical thinking. And we're also lucky to have Gulsha Ozkan Inal, who's the site coordinator for ABE Turkey. And she is currently a doctoral student at the Middle East Technical University in Turkey. She is a freelance education expert working in the development workshop and works in science education, teacher PD, critical thinking, and inquiry-based science education. And our ABE Turkey team also includes four of their wonderful teachers. So we have Isik Artikin, Shuleyman Atila, Özlem Karagac, and Dr. Aysgul Tanruverdi. And I know they're all smiling at me because I'm working very hard on my pronunciation and I'm sure they can correct it later on in the round table. 
Um, we also have with us a fantastic team from ABE Italy. We have Dr. Anna Pascucci, who is the site director for ABE Italy. Um, she has been a longtime presenter for us. She's the co-director of the International School in Science Education. Um, Anna is a supervisor at the Inter-University School of Specialization in Teaching. She's an evaluator for the National Institute for the Evaluation of the Educational System of Education and Training. She's a UNESCO consultant. Basically, she does everything and wears many hats, and we're really excited to have her as a panelist today. Um, Dr. Luigi Renzi is the site coordinator for ABE Italy, and she's a teacher, a teacher trainer, a board member of the National Association of Science Teachers, and she's been a representative for Italy in the expert panel for biology within the baccalaureate exam. Oh, hello. Somebody has their mic on. Nice of you to join us today. Um, we also have Dr. Chiara Garulli, who's the ABE ambassador for ABE Italy and is a member also of the National Association of Science Teachers. Um, Chiara is a trainer, a member of the PD team and regional coordinator in the Marsh region for ABE Italy. Um, she's collaborated on many international projects in science education with a background in molecular and applied biology. Um, and we just have such a multi-talented team. I'm not even scratching the surface of all the accomplishments of our panelists, but we're so happy to have you here today. Um, so we're going to begin with a moderated discussion, and I'm just going to ask our panelists some questions. Um, and we'll begin by getting to know a little bit about why they think peer learning is important. So Anna, let's begin with you. Why do you think peer learning among teachers is important for ABE Italy? And what benefits do you think that it has? Okay. So um, good afternoon to for Italy, to everyone. And uh, for, uh, for Italy, uh, peer for ABE Italy, peer learning is, uh, is essential. Is uh, at the core of our system. Uh, first of all, who are the peers for us? The peers are all are educator and scientists. So all the individual, all the people that are involved in our system is quite strange, but this is our system. So it's a system thinking for us. Uh, so peer learning is essential at AB Italy because it enable the nurturing and support of the community at different levels. Empower teacher, but in the same time, nurture the overall growth of the community. So um, it, um, peer learning also allow individuals to evolve regardless of where they start from. We try to break down uh, hierarchical and ideological barriers. This is very important for us. And, uh, and so we try to encourage, um, encourage uh, the exchange of idea or perspective, different perspective, uh, knowledge between, between different scale from local to national, international and back. And of course, uh, in this process uh, of different level that are interconnected and came together, um, uh, it, it is very important the structure of our site. So I've tried, uh, I will share with you our structure, some, some slide, I'll try to share. Okay. Oh, say, uh, so we involve 12 regions in Italy and we have an headquarter in Naples and then five distribution center that are, um, that are in charge of manage one region depending from how big is the region or three region. Then we have a mini distribution center that is a way that we call a small group of teachers and school and scientists because peers are also scientists for us. And then we have the school cluster. School clusters are local schools or so five, four or five schools that have an agreement 
uh, and so they share idea, activity, and so on, the equipment sometimes. And then we have the AB school. AB school for us, all the school are AB school, of course, but we call it AB school, the school where this, at least the 70% of science teacher are AB teacher. This is a way in facilitating peer learning for us. So, and the other key point is that we try to foster a diffused leadership. So it means that, of course, there are roles and responsibilities at different levels, but in the same time, we are inclusive. So all the people and also the teacher, of course, can decide to, to take roles depending on the task or the skills or the expertise, their time, especially the time. So we have the structure, but it's a fluid structure. And you can, you can this is the key for to empower the teacher in our, and so is a, a sort of virtual, uh, virtual cycle. Um, the key, um, aspect or dynamic uh, that we try to foster are trust, respect, and essentially absence of judgment. That is very important in, in peer learning and support and open support. You can have the support at different levels for your local, for your, uh, your peers at school, as well as at national level. So it's a, 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 a connected system. The idea is system thinking try is a is a unusual is unusual because we break the barrier we break the hierarchy we break this is strange, especially for the scientists I think but they they are they enjoy this kind of climate that we an environment that we try to to foster so I like as um, some of you know I like the analogy with the fractals I think as the fractal create a self-similar pattern. It is the same in our vision. Um, so it's not a romantic vision, but it's a strategy and our action to support this strategy. So this is the world vision at national level, that is this fractal, of course. This is sort of scale dimension. And then there are the multi-regional level, and then there is the regional level, and then there is the same level that I uh, described before, local level and the, uh, the school level. So peer are educators, this is a key point for us, educator and scientists. So all the people can benefit from this system because it's an open system and the exchange is, uh, is quite normal for us. So which, which are for the teacher, especially for the teacher, the benefit. The benefit first is the empowerment, a system where they have some skill and they have the whole the floor to, uh, to express, to grow, uh, and so on. And then because it's a program, um, there is a, a transformative process. Uh, it's not just one time. So they have all the time to grow and grow each year, to evolve is, a, is a, an evolution in our, in our vision. And then we try to boost self-confidence because providing opportunity, different kind of opportunity to, to share their own experiences, expertise and perspective and so on. And some, some teacher, for example, are coordinator of distribution center. So they have the highs at different levels, at school, at school, at local school, and as distribution center. This is very useful for for the, uh, the world system. So there is also the ownership. We think that we, giving, we, we give them the say in their own learning goal and objective. Also, and this is a very important, we try to develop leadership. That is something that you can learn or you, you have to, to be trained to um, assume some leadership role. It's not something that it is like a flower, <laughs> always it. You have to learn to be a leader. And so globally, this system, uh, we think that is benefit for all and say climate, uh, spring uh, climate, I think. 
where there are the blooming of flower, unexpected sometimes. That is for us. Thank you so much, Anna. And I, I really appreciate um, the, the fact that you not only are developing a very intentional system um, across your, your teacher community, but the idea that leadership is just embedded within that. And I think that's something that for many teachers, depending where you are, you don't always have the opportunity for that at your site. Um, so hearing these kind of approaches to how this can look and how you can actually set this up at your site is really exciting. And I know we'll hear more from our team of Italy teachers um, about what that feels like and, and what benefits you feel you've gotten from that. Um, so I wanna pose the same question to our ABE Turkey team. So Gulsha, let me ask you the same question. You have a very strong teacher community. Um, what benefits, why did you set it up that way? What benefits do you see? Hmm. Uh, hello, Jessica, and hello to everyone. Uh, firstly, uh, we are very happy to participate round table discussion as a uh, Turkey. Uh, for the AB Turkey, actually, teacher collaboration is the heart of the AB program in order to not only to grow uh, our teachers, but also to improve our students' outcome. So uh, AB Turkey uh, always trying to embed the soul of the uh, teacher cooperation not only during, but also the after uh, the professional development program. Uh, since uh, we believe that uh, we can do better together. Um, now Elif will share the presentation for me. Um, as the Robert Jones said, uh, actually, we really like this quotation. The most valuable resource that all teachers have is actually each other. Without collaboration, our growth is limited to, or, or just our perspective. Uh, so uh, really that is, we should have none of us is good as all of us mentality. Um, actually, before the discussing the benefits of the peer collaboration, uh, we really would like to discuss the, some reasons why ABA Turkey teachers need to collaborate each other. Actually, our teachers need to collaborate in order to share their good practices with, with each other and cope with their difficulties that face during the, their classroom implementation. And they, in order to share their responsibility to improve their classroom practices. Uh, actually, these are the main reasons why they need to actually uh, collaborate with each other. Let's now talk about the, when the teachers generally need to collaborate. Actually, if you look at the reasons and our experience, we could say that our AB teachers generally start to, to uh, start to, to collaborate with each other after the first semester of the AB implementation. I mean that, for example, uh, after our uh, teachers first, first AB trial, some of them improve some scenario before the micro pipette or gel electro for his lab laboratories. Uh, in order to enrich their classroom discussion. Uh, that is, uh, after they realize their strengths and their weaknesses about their first implementation, they start to, to look uh, to share good practices or deal with their difficulties uh, in their classroom and so on, actually. And our experience showed the similarity with the teacher change model of the GASKI, actually. We really like this uh, model. We, actually, we are trying to integrate this model to our PD program. Actually, um, GASKI uh, thinks that beliefs color the reality. I mean that uh, GASKI consider that sustainable change in the teacher practices only occurs after uh, teachers' beliefs and attitudes have changed. But this change actually occurs as, as a result of seeing improvement in students' learning outcome, and that result from change in teaching practices, actually. We really um, see the similarity, uh, how they need to collaborate on this teacher change model. Uh, and for your question, actually, we can summarize the benefits of teacher collaboration as firstly, one of them is professional growth. The other one is improved student outcome. The last one is improved teacher outcome. Actually, uh, as you've seen in the slides, each benefit affects each other. Uh, let me mention each of them separately. Uh, firstly, 
peer collaboration really provides an opportunity for professional growth for teachers. I mean that uh, peer collaboration opens uh, some room, some door for professional development for teachers through different way. Firstly, uh, peer collaboration provides emotional support to teachers. It increases their well-being of the teachers. I mean that because teachers do not feel alone when they um, stay together. So uh, collaboration also builds healthy uh, relationship among the teachers. Uh, the other one, peer collaboration, allow teachers to feel a sense of belonging since they are the part of the community. And oh, it also increases the teacher's efficacy by allowing teachers to exert their professional competency and become more confident in their professional abilities. And also, uh, peer collaboration allows teachers to play their strengths and their weaknesses and learn from uh, each other since um, they can share their challenge and they can get advice how to get uh, the best possible result for the students. Uh, in addition to uh, teacher professional growth, uh, peer collaboration also uh, helps to improve teacher practices from the many perspective as you've seen in the slide. Firstly is the most important one. It increases the pedagogical knowledge which uh, yeah, with respect to different questioning strategies, different measurements and um, assessment strategies, uh, different innovative teaching approach like inquiries learning, uh, SITAM design thinking, some interdisciplinary teaching approach and so on. It also uh, improved uh, um, some uh, classroom uh, management strategies. And lastly, it focuses uh, different objectives from different domains in, during the implementation. Uh, actually, in addition to um, pedagogical knowledge, it increases the content knowledge uh, about the biology, chemistry, physics, uh, biotechnology, or some interdisciplinary contacts. And lastly, um, uh, peer collaboration increases the teacher's technical knowledge. Uh, through using different teaching tools, Padlet, Mentimeter, and so on. And also it uh, helps to integrate different uh, uh, online learning platforms. The most important one is the LAP Exchange for the uh, AB program. And lastly, actually, the uh, actually our major group is the students. So uh, teacher collaboration helps to improve students' outcome from many perspectives. Uh, firstly, uh, it helps to reduce students' behavioral problems, such as side conversation and inappropriate cell phone usage and at all. It's some uh, basic uh, examples uh, for the misbehavioral uh, of students. Uh, the other one, actually, it increases students' participation from different uh, backgrounds. Uh, I mean that it helps to create more inclusive, actually more uh, um, equal opportunity learning environment for the all students, uh, actually from uh, different backgrounds. And lastly, actually more meaningful, concrete and permanent learning. And we mean that actually, um, Peer collaboration provides uh, more meaningful and permanent learning for target student outcome of the AB program. These are the actually awareness of the biotechnology career, content knowledge, uh, and some uh, different skills in uh, many fields. For example, laboratory skills, collaboration skills, some design thinking skills, and ethical reasoning skills at all, actually. These are the some summary of uh, how teacher collaboration actually contributes to teacher and student and also actually AB community. It's funny, I hear so much coming from both teams about the fact that these kind of the human benefits and the content knowledge benefits are wrapped up in each other and it's not one or the other, but that each of them feed each other. And so it's, it's really exciting to hear this isn't just kind of something nice to do, 
although it is nice and it helps provide encouragement, but it's also got real tangible benefits to content, knowledge, and skill development. And so hearing that that comes with, I think can be reassuring sometimes um, to know that, that it's worth the time and the energy that teachers are putting in. Um, so Elif, I wanna ask you, have you, um, there's challenges, obviously, this isn't always easy to do. So have you observed any challenges or do you have any advice um, to kind of help make that process easier? Uh, thank you, Jessica. Uh, hi, everyone. As a site director in AV Turkey since 2020, I could say that the challenges behind peer collaboration are mainly related to developing and nurturing a community of practice, as Jean Lev and Etienne Wenger term. So what defines a community of practice is really uh, important to understand the challenges along with their solutions for uh, peer collaboration. Uh, when we ask our teachers how we differ from other teacher training providers, our teachers voice three characteristics, which are also uh, the core elements of a community of practice. If we go to the next slides, we can see these elements. For example, the first one is uh, our teachers say that our project team have a shared interest, competence and com uh, commitment with teachers. Second, we pursue this common interest uh, through joint activities, discussions, problem solving opportunities, information sharing and relationship building. That is, we interact regularly to learn from one another. We show willingness to ask tough questions and share our ideas. And the third one is we are actual practitioners uh, in this domain of interest and build a shared departure of resources and ideas that we take back time to do practice. Uh, all of these legs change over, uh, over time, but the trick is not to change all of them at the same time in order not to face the problem. In order to develop a community of practice, if we go to the next slide, it is very important to find a common purpose, concern or passion uh, to work together. In this respect, we as a project team ask our teachers daily goals within the scope of AB program. Uh, based upon um, uh, ask their uh, goals, not only beginning, but also at the end of each semester uh, through uh, planning and evaluation meetings. And based upon uh, the analysis of our teacher ideas coming from these meetings, for example, this semester we have two groups formed based upon the needs of our teachers. Uh, for, for instance, one group of teachers define their common goal as developing and conducting an e-twinning project with the teachers of other AB sites in order to share and learn from their best practices. With this round table, I really would like to share their request to find a partner for such an e-twinning project. If you are interested in developing and conducting an e twinning project on AB micro pipetting laboratory with AB Turkey teachers uh, within, uh, for a month between April and May, uh, you can send an email to me. That is, I really would like to share our teachers call for an international peer collaboration for an e twinning project. Uh, teachers should know that there are different types of committees of practice based upon their common purpose, such as helping communities, innovation committees, and based upon their community, the structure change. And in addition to finding common purpose, uh, if we go to the next slides, it is also important to determine the rules. For example, the, the teacher community should select an internal leaders for different purpose. For example, there should be a leader in the community who organize the meetings, and there should be a leader who will collect and organize the information. There should be a leader who will connect the community with other communities, for example, if they really would like to innovate something. Uh, and in addition to that, it is really important to identify a regular but flexible meeting time. And it is also important to discuss how they will select newcomers, new group members in their community. Uh, it is also, in addition to developing a community of uh, practice, it is also a challenge to nurture the existing community of practice. If we go to the next slide, 
Uh, in this respect, the teachers could, should uh, recognize the work done by each member of the community through a strictly self-sustaining reward system. For example, they can create opportunities to talk about how their members contribute to the community or as a side uh, or as a community, you, you should create an environment in which the value they bring is acknowledged. Uh, in addition, uh, we should connect what we are doing with their real practices. We should leverage their potentials and we should always provide support through encouraging them move forward and remain focused on the common purpose, as well as they, uh, we should provide them to determine their barriers and how they can uh, solve these barriers within their community. So these are all we want to share about the challenges and advices uh, we can say for our teachers for peer collaboration. Thank you so much. And I see Luigina mentioning how rich that kind of inter-community connection is in Turkey. And it's it really is a distinguishing feature, I think, of their site. And of course, Italy has the same. And so I want to turn to Luigina and ask um, from your experience with in, in Italy working with uh, across teacher teams, um, what challenges have you observed and what strategies might you recommend? Second. Okay. Can you hear me? Now we can yeah. hear you. Okay. Thank you so much. It was very interesting to to see what what our colleagues in Turkey have been doing. Um, in my few minutes, I want to talk on. I want to focus on three challenges and three strategies, uh, major strategies that we had setting up uh, to face those challenges. Um, well. The very first challenge is the fact that uh, most of the people in their school felt isolated. They, you know, the idea of to work by themselves in school, like you see here in the picture. Um, what? So this is one of the major challenge uh, because we want people to interact. So uh, we require for each school to have at least two teacher, two teachers per each school so uh, that they can uh, uh, work together, um, interact, and also criticize in, in a good way um, the work uh, when they work together in the AB labs. The other thing is um, it, to, to um, increase the uh, contamination and also the, um, the the fact that the people don't have to work by themselves, uh, we foster the student to participate in order to contaminate among them in schools, uh, for instance, in open days, uh, in social communities, or in some events like the events we did last year in Spoleto. So the fact that if the students talk to each other and they kind of uh, um, make the difference with their teacher in order to participate to the Abe uh, to the Abe project and so that the school can enrich herself itself in the quantity uh, of of teachers that work together um the other point is to foster uh, the cooperation of um, of the teachers to work as a group uh, as a group to organize events together as a local team as happened in the recent years before COVID and after COVID that we work together to organize a team. And this is a very uh, interesting triggers in order to make the people involved uh, in, in, the, in this uh, project. Uh, the other uh, challenge that we face is the IBSE. As you know, uh, our PDI um, has four different uh, parts. One of the par one of the part is IBSE, Inquiry Based Science Education. And we uh, we think that this methodology is one of the most effective to uh, as an inclusive methodology methodology for the students 
um, and most of the teachers that come to our PDI for uh, ABE Labs doesn't know anything about IBSE. So this is a real challenge. Um, so which are the strategies we set up in order to, uh, of course, introduce this methodology and trigger uh, the idea of working differently, not only in ABE uh, labs, but also in other, you know, science uh, subjects. So we set up activities during the PDI. Uh, those activities are integral part of our PDI. The other thing is supporting um, the, the teachers uh, with some activity and many examples that you can find in lab exchange classes. We organize lab, lab exchange classes with many of these simple, um, from simple to more complex and complicated also activities so that they can easily find things. And the other thing um, is to support them during the whole time that they are in the PDI until they present all their data. Um, last but not least is to, uh, in, in, how to say, stimulate the um, IBSE teachers in the courses to join the, um, the community uh, of the National Association of Science Teacher that deals with the IBSE courses. And normally that happens very often because IBSE, we think that it's a very powerful approach and it comes out that most of the time that happens. And this, what happens is happens as as the Turkish uh, group said, the teacher empowerment. That's extremely important that the teacher feel not isolated, feel together to work and increase their um, not only the knowledge but the uh, the strength in teaching and in teaching Abi Abi Labs. The last. Uh, the last challenge I want to point out is to maintain the veteran community. We have been working many years now, it's about seven years, six, seven years that we work in, uh, in ABE. Um, and we want to keep the veterans, um, the veterans that have been with us in, for many years. So what we do is do the refreshment on demand uh, to veterans uh, tailored on their needs. So it depends on what they want to refresh, either, you know, the several labs, or IBSE or natural curriculum. We work on that to do the refreshment. The other thing is to organize a national and local event like uh, the Abbey Day with the scientists and teachers and, and the other thing that we, we did last year and we are doing again this year is the um national um, um national activity uh, during the two world festival in uh, uh in spoleto uh, so events and the other thing that we want to point out is something that i don't know if you have in turkey but we have uh, uh, in italy and um, i know that also in in us they do is uh, what we call work related learning um, which is called PCTO. It's uh, the acronym that stays for um, <clears throat> Work Related uh, Learning and Orientation for Future. And what we do generally, we work with different schools. So we peer each other uh, also through, um, through, you know, the online resources. So for instance, Last year we did between our school in Spoleto and uh, Naples school in near uh, Naples, Castellammare, and we work together uh, because those hours are for students. They are 90, 90, 90 hours in three years, and this work together it improves the relationship also from different part uh, in Italy. So I think this is our. Mm, challenges, main challenges and strategies. I hope this uh, give you an idea of what we do to, uh, at the end, empower the teacher and make the PDI in Italy work better. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Luigina, and for all of our um, panel responders. This is just highlighting, it seems, 
that, you know, it's really about reinforcing the benefits and the why behind this collaboration to keep teachers excited and engaged and fed and learning in all of these different dimensions. So thank you so much for, for sharing these approaches. And the next part of our roundtable is going to be focusing on actual examples from our teachers who are with us today and from our teacher teams. So um, I know we're running behind, so I'm going to make a disclaimer right up front. We probably won't have time for Q&A at the end. Um, and if any of you need to leave right at the top of the hour, that's absolutely fine. But we're going to keep recording so that we don't cut anybody off um, as you're presenting. So I just wanted to mention that up front. Um, so I think we're going to begin. Um, we love hearing about the actual kind of show and tell what you've actually been doing. So I think we're going to invite Kiara and Luigina to share some examples. And so Kiara, I'll turn it over to you and you can just let me know when you'd like me to run your video. Yeah, yeah. Hi everybody, I'm glad for the opportunity to be here with you today. And my purpose was to give you a direct testimony of the peer work supported and encouraged by the AB site of Italy at the smaller level, so in the school level, and actually to uh, show you the evolution of the school during the time. Uh, when I was preparing for this speech, uh, I realized that my voice was not enough to show you this transformation. And so I prepared a video and uh, uh, done with my colleagues and to share with you also uh, their voices. So I hope that in this way you can feel our collaboration and you can feel how uh, our school is changed. So. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and you can go. Okay, so uh, what are your names and jobs? Daniela. Chiara. We are, we are teacher. teacher. Where do you come from? Recanati, a small town in the centre of Italy. Why ABE? I strongly believe young generation need to know and practically understand biotechnology. Because we wanted to integrate biotechs in some way in our didactic practice. When did you start? 2017. Uh, we attended the PDI in Foligno. And we were literally enchanted by the sharing mood we found in this course. When would you stop? Never. Never. How did you develop the ABE labs? We inserted ABE lab in curricula of our schools. In some classes, we developed the whole program in a year as a full immersion in biotech. In others, we spread the subject for the last three years. Do you cooperate? In which way? Uh, we started to work together the year we attended ABE course. Initially, we just prepared side by side the materials and the bench. Then we started to chat about uh, the students' reactions. Now, we share all ideas or directly plan the activity together. Sometimes we do the laboratory in compressence, and even if we cannot, uh, we analyze the outcome together, and then we modify what we have done together on the basis of our students' reactions. Uh, in this way, each year uh, we change something, and this makes our, wor our work and lab lab uh, really fun. What is IBSE? approach and why with ABE? ABC uh, means students develop progressively case scientific ideas uh, through learning how to investigate and build their knowledge and uh, um, in this way they understand the world around them. We use this approach initially as uh, it is integrated in the course that we attended, so the PDI in Foligno. 
Of course, uh, at some point students need to see the lab protocols, but they can understand what are happening inside the Eppendorf through some preparated activities that leads them to scientifically reasoning and to communicate their folks to peers. What did the ABE program give you? Obviously, uh, the possibility to bring biotechnology to our students. The possibility to learn to work together in a long lasting way. Here by here, we modify some aspects in order to integrate the EBSE approach and ABE labs in this increases students' motivation and engagement. In your school, are only you ABE teacher? No. ABE is contaminating our schools and this is wonderful for our students. I did all lab in 2021 with my third class of Applied Science School. Last year I made a break because I was pregnant, but now I am back. In the last two years I developed a PM course for fifth year of classical school, in which all ABE labs were performed. Uh, we have incremented in this way what we perform for a not scientific school. This year we have decided to further enlarge the possibilities for our students. We integrated the ABE program with a PON, a grant given to, by the government, since 5th and 4th graders had the possibility to enroll in the ABE program. Obviously, for this project we have to work all together and it's really important to build a team spirit and share in both. Uh, for this year I'm only a support as I have Thank you for your attention and uh, we are glad for the possibility to share with you our experience uh, as and in AB community. Bye! Bye! So I first of all, we need to congratulate Chiara. So Thank congratulations you. on your good news. <laughs> That's Thank a you. great way to share. <laughs> yeah, it's a surprise. <laughs> so anything else that you want to add about how teachers have collaborated? It's exciting to see and hear those specific examples of how teachers are working together, particularly around IBSE in Italy, which I know has been such a focus for your team. Um, anything you want to add, Luigina, to the video that we just saw? Well, I think since we're running out of uh, uh, time, maybe we can decide to, I don't know, but I think that's enough for us. So okay. we can see the Turkish group and then we can maybe, you know, add something later on. What do you think? Sounds good. We'll dive right into Turkey's um, sh sharing some examples from their site. Um, so at this point, um, I'm just going to turn it over to our teachers from ABE Turkey. Um, so Isik, Shuleman, Özlem, and Dr. Iskul, I'll ask you to take it from here and to go ahead and share your screens. Hi, I am Işgar Tekin. I worked as a biology teacher for about 19 years. And uh, I have been working as an education and program development specialist for the last um, three years at a private school. I meet with uh, the AB program and project team seven years ago, and uh, it changed my life. I collaborate with my uh, col uh, colleague, colleagues in three uh, different ways through uh, the AB program in Turkey. First, I carried uh, out different implementation of the inquiry-based learning approach with my students five years ago. I did a lesson plan about the uh, cell together with the AB teacher in another city through online meetings. After that, we recorded our classroom implementation um, and shared them with the, each other. From the, uh, these implementation records, we uh, supported each other's professional development by giving feedback about our classroom practice, practice suggest questions, strategies, 
classroom management strategies, evaluation strategies. During this process, the project team continued to support us uh, by giving feedback to our lesson plans and recording of our classroom implementations. Secondly, I do not have an active classroom in my school because of my current uh, position. Uh, so, uh, so I implement the AB, pro uh, AB program in my school by collaborating with other chemistry and biology teachers of the school. We come together with uh, these teachers in my school formed different lesson plans for the AB program and implemented it in their classroom. Uh, then we hold evaluation meetings with these teachers to share our uh, observation and suggestion about the implementations. Uh, the, uh, therefore, these teachers found an uh, opportunity to implement the AB program by in, uh, integrating the inquiry-based learning approach. Uh, thirdly, uh, during my active teaching period, uh, I collaborate with the university in my city to uh, contact a biotechnology program through the collaboration with the AB teacher. She not only gives feedback about the uh, bi biotechnology program with respect to content and pedagogical strategy, but also attended the program as an observer. During this process, the project team actively, actively supported us. With uh, the support of AB project team and my peers, I become uh, a member of a wonderful community who learned from each other. I would like to thank the MGM Foundation and AB program that I feel really lucky. We are so lucky to have you as well. Um, as you can see, we're learning from you. So I think we have a couple more teachers um, from Turkey who are gonna share their examples. Okay. Hello everyone. Mm, sorry for that. Uh, before our presentation, uh, we will introduce ourselves. I am Suleyman. I am chemistry teacher uh, in Turkey. Uh, my peer is uh, Özlem. Hello, uh, my name is Özlem. I'm a biology teacher at the same school. Uh, we are together. We are working together. Uh, we are simultaneously working uh, together and uh, applying a ABA program uh, in Turkey. Uh, we will explain in uh, terms of different issues in terms of chemistry and biology uh, for deep in the knowledge. Uh, we will focus on in today's uh, explanation how teachers collaborate to learn from one to another. Uh, we will uh, practice different type of issues about connecting with the chemistry, biology, physics, history, and the biotechnology. By uh, before the, our presentations or applications, uh, we will always debating, planning, and problem so solving uh, our teachers, inquiring together, uh, capitalizing on each other's strengths, uh, and inviting other ABA teachers outside our institution to observe our uh, practices uh, for, for giving uh, some feedbacks about uh, that. Uh, here is our school, uh, if you see. Uh, Özlem explain how we do a different type of um, issues uh, by participating in the face-to-face -face training prepared by the AB Turkey team, uh, it's benefits for us. Uh, we received training uh, with us. We shared our experiences by participating in the training organized by our teachers in the AB program uh, at the METU Biological Science. Uh, MGM Biotech Experience application were introduced at the EcoClimb Summit. MGM Biotech Experience application were introduced at the Snow College Science Fair. Uh, we have prepared content with the social media team uh, of our institution in order to raise awareness with the application we have made. Uh, we are always focused on applications and uh, how we write these applications in Turkey. 
how we did and implement ABE program, uh, we always design a program uh, ABE in two parts. Always uh, we can plan a theoretical discussion part in Zoom. And then we will uh, do an ex, uh, application in face to face at the weekend, our school laboratory. Uh, and we will uh, do an engine biotechnology experience interdisciplinary in our practices. Uh, Özlem, explain bio how holdings, we can do. Uh, we are by holding many per meetings in order to deepen in the fields of chemistry, physics, biology, and biotechnology by contacting the teachers in our school and the relevant experts in their field. We designed interesting daily life example for the subjects. We will convey to the students and brainstorming with the student what kind of questions. I will show some of them these questions. Uh, we can create a divergent and a conver convergent, uh, convergent questions uh, like that ones. <laughs> and we can creating a question between the biology and chemistry concepts. Uh, and we, we will focus on the three dimensional side of a triangle uh, because we will uh, exactly in this way our students on a path of permanent learning uh, we can always uh, examine the sub symbolic symbolic and atomic representations for the students to understand the deepest knowledge of chemistry and the biology concepts uh, always uh, explain the schematic representations three dimensional representations and also give a historical background to understand the deepest knowledge of students uh, for example we will focus on the dna issue Issues. Uh, we explain the Rosalind Franklin and also give them different uh, interesting examples and creating the sample cases. For example, we can give a students who killed Sally. Uh, this is uh, we cannot explain too long uh, because too long. Uh, if you want, we will. Uh, if you want, you can contact with. Is, uh, we can give uh, these examples or who is the uh, biological father of this uh, child we can create also uh, and the last sessions we can apply the ancient DNA issues uh, was wheat farming made uh, in our country is a uh, 8,400 years ago. Uh, in this uh, example, we will focus on uh, or we put the history lesson in the focus on the lesson, especially when designing our lesson about ancient DNA. In this way, uh, the students saw how history and the garden <laughs> effect on the sun. So uh, this is our high school teacher. Uh, we can uh, always creating uh, uh, videos about uh, pre-meetings. Uh, and uh, students watch these videos and then applying the face-to-face -face issues. Uh, at last, uh, we can give a video about our students uh, to reflection of ABA program. Uh, but before that, I need to share also with sound. Hello, yeah. I'm Nuru and I'm uh, a student from uh, Snap College. What are the first three things that come uh, to biotechnology mind? Biotechnology's impact on program. other fields, contributions on uh, technology, and uh, experiences towards your future. Why do you recommend the ABE program to your friends? Um, again, uh, biotechnology experience first appeared to be a biology chemistry uh, project, but when I really experienced it, uh, it turned out to be a, a opportunity that everyone should go through. What do you like about the ABE program? Uh, I really liked being a part of something that we can only see in films or books. Uh, that felt very important to me. That's what I liked. Thank you for listening. This is the last uh, Hello, our, uh, I'm presentation. And <laughs> that was so wonderful. And I don't want to rush you because this is why we're having the round table um, is to hear these great examples from your teams. Um, I just, I think it's it's such a um, an eye opener when we see these fantastic examples of how teachers create and deepen and make richer the ABE labs and curriculum when they come together. Their ideas are far beyond anything we could do. So, iSchool, would you like to share a little? <laughs> yes. Uh, hi uh, all again. Uh, I'm Ashuri Tanrıverdi. Uh, as a uh, ABE teacher for three years, I have done and uh, continue to uh, ABE practices with my students. Uh, with the happiness of being another uh, ABE meeting, uh, I will uh, tell you about my uh, uh, four uh, type of collaboration in ABE applications. Uh, 
these are the collaborations. And the first uh, one is, can you uh, pass the slides? Uh, first one is, uh, during the pandemic period, we made applications online uh, with my colleague Gökben Celik, uh, who also works in a, a public school. Uh, on biotechnology and DNA isolation, my colleague and I have planned a lesson for our uh, students who have never thought about biotechnology before, uh, have not discussed uh, the connection between biotechnological applications and uh, have uh, deficiencies in developing in the uh, developing a scientific perspective. And next slide, please. Uh, it was an application focused on these questions in the uh, slides, uh, and at the end of the uh, application, the students first uh, saw how uh, they positioned uh, biotechnological applications in their minds, and they realized that uh, in the big picture, uh, each biotechnology application is related to each other. And next slide, we can uh, go. Uh, after this lesson, uh, we realized that some of the questions we expected during the application were not asked and the inertia uh, brought by pandemics period affect our students. Uh, my partner and I thought that we could eliminate this inertia with uh, cooperation between students and we decided to continue the second application with a common task uh, assigned to student groups. Uh, before moving on to DNA isolation, we prepared a scenario to connect uh, these two less uh, courses. This is a scenario. Uh, you are scientists at the Genetic Research Institution in Norway. As a result of public survey, it's determined uh, that one of the uh, favorite smells of the Norwegian uh, people in the smell of banana, and it's recommended that this uh, determination can be used uh, to increase uh, first concept uh, consumption. We ask to transfer the smell of banana to the fish and how can you do this work? Uh, and then discuss these questions. Uh, the students were asked to uh, repeat the process at home and were asked to share and evaluate the results of experiment with each other through uh, various applications, we use uh, WhatsApp at uh, that time. And the third uh, cooperation, a uh, second cooperation, uh, collaboration is that uh, since the school I work is a vocational high school, there is a, a production oriented uh, education. Uh, for this reason, my students who participate in ABE applications improve themselves uh, on design of macro pipettes. Uh, for this, uh, we collaborate with a vocational teacher who are not a BE teacher, and, but uh, who will support my students uh, in this regard. Uh, while making the, uh, designs, we uh, smash the broken micro pipettes, these micro pipettes provided by ABE. Uh, it's not uh, yet uh, operational, but our uh, students continue to work on it. And the third uh, collaboration is, uh, last year we moved ABE to the eating platform. Uh, maybe you know the, this platform, which is frequently used among European countries. Uh, it was a project involving uh, students uh, of two schools to discuss the, their ABE practices uh, and to um, criticize the uh, result of the practice uh, with uh, justifications. And this work uh, we did uh, at the end of the year uh, was awarded with a quality label. Uh, we are happy uh, for that. Um, in this way, we had the opportunity to share a a ABE not only among uh, practitioners, but also with other teachers and other students. Uh, as ABE uh, community, uh, as uh, Elif uh, said, said it, uh, we are thinking about a new uh, eating project so uh, that will make ABE widespread in the eating uh, platform. And the last uh, collaboration is we grow and create a new uh, collaboration by sharing all these uh, experiences uh, in new teacher trainings of the ABE community. And we are in contact uh, with them always. Thank you for listening to me. 
I can just see in the chat, um, there's so many ideas sparking that you all have shared um, that we just want to keep growing these great ideas you have. I want to say a huge thank you to our ABE Italy and our ABE Turkey teams today for participating in this roundtable. We're going to be coming after you for your resources because they're so good. We want to keep sharing them and making them more broadly available. Um, we also are going to be reaching out to some of our European ABE sites to see if there's interest in pursuing um, perhaps some of these e-twinning opportunities. So watch out for that if you're from ABE Europe, um, one of our sites. Um, we just are uh, once again reminded of the power of teachers to promote ABE and to make it better. Um, you're engaging your students in such incredible experiences. And despite the pandemic, you've been able to really do that in so many ways. Um, the creativity is just remarkable. Um, so we are so lucky to have our ABE teachers who are running this program and, and reaching out and connecting with each other. Um, I want to also mention that we have another roundtable recording from our ABE Italy team about IBSE, Inquiry-Based Science Education. So if you want to know more about how they are doing that at their site, um, I would suggest checking out that roundtable as well. Um, so huge thank you to all of you. Again, we'll make this recording available on the website. And for those of you who registered, you'll be receiving receiving all of the great materials and slides and